it's unlike anything really that I can explain to you in terms of what it's really like, but the U.S. Mint numbers, I think, kind of bear witness to that. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Mark is here with you for Arcade Economics. And welcome on into the show where certainly if you are a gold and silver investor, congratulations on the news because as we've seen the gold price flirt with that $2,000 mark a couple of times over the recent couple of weeks, there was quite a rally today and now you see the futures price up at $2,042. So here uh, we are looking at the one day chart. Let's take a look back at the one week. You see there's the $2,000 level, that red line and price broaching that briefly until a spike higher. Similar price chart in silver where up over a dollar in the futures contracts. Now silver trading above $25. So the rally continuing in silver as well. And just for those who like to see the Kitco multicolored charts, um, they're showing the spot price a little bit lower than the futures, but you can see the big move there in both gold and silver. So not entirely surprising given what is going on and given what you're about to hear from Andy Sheckman as he talks about what he's been experiencing on the retail level in gold and silver. And with that said, let's pass it over to him now so that you can hear more from this week's physical silver market report. Once again, it is that time for our Tuesday physical silver report with Andy Sheckman of Miles Franklin. So Andy, appreciate you making some time. Good to see you this morning. And how are you today, my friend? Always good to see you, brother. I'm I'm hanging in there. Thank you. It's been the craziest uh, three weeks that I can ever remember, and in, in my whole career, literally. Um, but we're surviving. We're hanging in there. It's good to be back, and thanks for having me. Well, as you come back on, we're recording Tuesday morning here, and we do have gold futures over two thousand dollars an ounce. We've seen. Price touched that level a couple of times in the past few weeks, break through a little bit and then come back down. We'll see where we go from here on this one. But I'm curious, how are people responding to that um, in the physical retail gold market? And we can touch on silver as well. Yeah, I mean, in, in a way, Chris, that is is um, unlike anything that this industry has ever seen. This is a whole different thing. As we've talked about before, this isn't about making money. This is about protecting what you've worked your life to, to obtain and to safeguard. And it's one thing when, when people on our side of the table speak to the frailty of the markets in terms of their fundamentals in the stock market or the bond market or the real estate market. It's, it's another thing altogether when we think about our money in the bank being at risk. And that has ignited a fuse of concern that I've never seen. I mean, you can look at the U.S. Mint numbers as an Example, their gold coin sales, when you put in uh, Eagles and Buffaloes combined to over 288,000 ounces in March. That's the highest monthly total since October 1998. And on a year to date basis, gold coins, have, they've sold almost 600,000 of them. And that's the highest first quarter since 1999 when everyone was waiting for the computer systems to blow up uh, humanity in the Y2K debacle. And that Believe it or not, I, I, I was actually in the industry back then uh, during Y2K, and, and that was pretty pretty crazy, too. I think our company sold as many one-tenth ounce eagles as anyone in the country back then because people were concerned. They were afraid that the computer systems are going to blow everything up. Well, the common thread here is that concern about what's happening has really dominated this entire landscape, um, and, and it's... it's um, it's 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 unlike anything really that I can explain to you in terms of what it's really like. But the U.S. Mint numbers, I think, kind of bear witness to that. Yeah. And speaking of the banking issues was interesting because we see, uh, obviously, in the silver community, uh, a lot of people's favorite banker, even Jamie Dimon saying the banking crisis is not over and will cause repercussions for years to come. Certainly, we'll see where the Fed goes with its interest rates in the next couple of meetings. Um, not an ideal situation for the Fed based on whatever they do, but just fascinating to see that this is now on the front of CNBC and 
think people are starting to notice and as a result turning to gold and silver. Yeah, no question about it. And, you know, I mean, speaking of JP Morgan, 33 tons of gold were withdrawn from their vault this week, you know, and that that's, that's uh, as big as it really gets. In fact, it might be one of the biggest sales in their history uh, selling 1.7 million ounces of gold. And they're, you know, you can see the cartel really trying to defend these lines in the sand that the $2,000 is a, is a big, a big line. And, and these big banks are not immune to the problems that we see either. You know, you look at the derivative position of a bank like JP Morgan at last I looked, and, and again, this is from memory, they were over $50 trillion in had a position in derivatives of over $50 trillion. So yeah, these banks, everyone's going to notice it's not just the regional banks that, are going to have issues. I think it's the big banks too. But what's really crazy about all of this is that the public, because of what's happening in the banking sister is, uh, sector, is being driven out of the regional banks into banks like J.P. Morgan with these massive balance sheets and these massive derivative exposures. And as Biden told us here recently, this last week, the banking crisis is not over. In fact, I think it's just beginning. And we're starting to see, I think, the reverberations through the banking sector as I don't know how many billions of dollars were withdrawn out of the market uh, just this last week. In fact, yes, I do know $126 billion were withdrawn out of just this past week, $225 billion in the last three weeks. So yet you can see money is being yanked out of the banks and you know going into precious metals going into brokerage accounts where people are putting their money into money markets, which is, is higher than, than, you know, what you're able to get at, at your, at your local bank. And so the stress and the strain that's being put on the banking system <clears throat> is what is driving this anxiety in the industry, Chris. And, and, you know, similar to the theme that I've been talking to you about for a very long time relating to um, supply, it's all drying up again. And premiums are going to rise again. And uh, I will tell you that, you know, when we first talked about this a week ago or two weeks ago, I told you that it was, it, it, we had seen an expansion, right? But that it was a largely, at least at the very beginning, largely existing clients who were, who were really doubling down because their beliefs were validated. In the past 30 days, my company has added 11,790 new clients in 30 days, almost 12,000 clients in 30 days. I'll, I'll tell you, that's more than we would add in two years most of the time. Honest to God, 11,790 new clients in 30 days. That is exactly what's happening. The public is for the very, very, very first time in my career waking up and, you know, <laughs> A lot of the things that I've been talking about for three years are now all of a sudden everyone, including Fox and CNN, is talking about. And people are starting to realize that the dollar for the very first time, not even just the banking system, but the dollar is the Achilles heel, that the dollar is being really forsaken by the majority of the world. And it's accelerating at a speed that is, um, I, I think this is this should be a wake up call for everyone in this country. Now, when we talk about silver, look, you know, silver is, is, is still not even close in my mind. It is the, the most undervalued asset on the planet. And the big money understands this as 4.8 million ounces of silver were taken off the COMEX this last week. And so, you know, you're seeing a continuation of the drawdown uh, of things like silver. And at, at $24 and 15 cents, that's really the, the technical level. We close above 24.15 and there's a lot of gap on the upside. And this is a, a number that they're really trying to defend. You can see it. They keep trying to keep it below 24.15. You know, I'm not a big technical analysis guy in the rigged market. I think it's a, it's a flawed um, metric when the market's rigged. But nonetheless, the majority of the world trades via technical analysis. And, and when you look at 24.15, it is a big number. And if we clear it, I think certainly there's a lot of room to the upside. But again, when we're talking about prices, uh, I, I really do believe that um, I, I really do believe that it, it's it's masking the real demand 
whether it be the retail demand, which is literally off the charts, or even the, the big money, which is quietly using suppressed price to, to drain the exchanges, 4.8 million ounces in a week, that ought to tell you that there's big demand behind gold and silver right now by the biggest money in the world. And, and it is because of the global de-dollarization. It is because of the ridiculous brain dead monetary policy of the Fed trying to backstop the banks and, and the fragility in the entire sector. And the fact that we are meddling with, with elections and, and, and indicting uh, former presidents when the current administration is literally a criminal cartel and yet we are so far off course that I think the rest of the world is looking at us right now as laughing stocks. And that is why I, I really do believe that you've seen so many things accelerate over just over the last week, week, whether it be Saudi Arabia striking trade alliances with Russia, India, Pakistan, and and, and Iran and, and China, or uh, China selling liquid natural gas to, to France uh, for Chinese yuan or France selling it to China for, for yuan instead of for dollars, or China and Brazil settling their trades, ditching the dollar, and on and on and on. Saudi Arabia partners with China to build an oil refinery. Kenya signs deal with UAE. We talked about that, and the Kenyan president saying, get out of dollars. There's There was over 20 things that I counted that happened in one week, 20. Normally, it's one or two. The acceleration is off the charts, and it all settles around or centers around one thing, and that is global de-dollarization and movement away from the Western hegemony. And if people aren't waking up to this right now, when you add in all of the stuff that's going on inside the country, the idiocy that's going on inside our country, Chris, I'm telling you, it's getting to the 12th hour and people need to realize that, that there is not a better place on the planet to put your money than silver, period. And I think the biggest money in the world who continues to use the, the cover of, of price and, and, and is showing us that by the drawdown in supply, I don't know. It, it uh, I think we're getting very close to that moment where it, it sparks a real awakening by the public. The fact that we have nearly 12,000 new clients in 30 days ought to bear witness to that. But I think it's just really the tip of the spear. I don't think you've seen anything yet. Show us another bank problem. Show us a continuation of de-dollarization from our allies. Uh, show us a country like Japan or Australia or New Zealand who are rumored to be joining BRICS. I mean, what more of a wake-up call do we need than to see our allies to the South, Mexico, formally apply to the BRICS nations? And, and these are the things that I've been screaming about for a long time. You do not buy silver to get wealthy, albeit it might be the most intriguing uh, investment opportunity I've ever seen, but I don't buy it ever for that reason. I buy it because it is wealth. And in times like this, where we are confronted with such sweeping change, more so than in any time in any of our lives, the potential loss of the world reserve currency and, and having our, our, you know, people, countries turning their backs on us and, and arguably, rightfully so, when you look at it from their perspective, I think this is beginning to be that moment that you and I in the back of our minds have seen for a very, very, very long time as to what silver really can do, not only to make you uh, wealthy, but to provide you a life raft for what is going to be, I believe, um, a, a, a once in a lifetime change. And, and we're crossing that Rubicon of, of of real, real change that no one in this country really has ever experienced. And I think we're, we're closer to that than we've ever been. Yeah, there certainly is a lot happening quickly, as you point out. And uh, I'm curious, how do things compare the last couple of days versus when uh, banking issues first started with uh, Silicon Valley Bank, uh, geez, I guess four or five weeks ago now? Has it slowed down a bit? Is How does it compare to when all this started initially? So that's the thing, you know, and I, I'm i not trying to say I was right, but what I've been talking about for the last three years it is now being embraced by the mainstream media. Fox and CNN act like they're onto something, that the BRICS nations are accentuating and these countries are striking alliances that had a big deal. It was a big deal when the second largest exporter of corn in the world, Brazil, 
signed a deal to only trade with China in Yuan. The mainstream media is waking up to what is happening, the alliances that are being made in the BRICS nations. And, you know, maybe no bigger than Saudi Arabia just formally applying for the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And this is gaining traction in the mainstream media. And so it's one thing to talk about banks failing, which certainly has ignited a, a cascade of concern. But for the first time, I think you're seeing a broader understanding of what it means to hold the world reserve currency and what it possibly means to lose that. And so what we are seeing is um, an influx of very, very large orders, um, six and seven figure on, on average. Now, we don't have an order minimum. We work with all sorts of clients and they're happy to do so. But when you get 20 or 30 people in a day, each one of our brokers who are wanting to buy six and seven figures, this is stuff that I've never seen before. Um, this is stuff that I never even dreamed of as owning a company in, in this industry ever. And, and yet we're still only just barely expanding into the mainstream. And so it, it's, it's a continuation. It's, it's um, actually larger orders and just complete and total anxiety. If you don't get back to someone within an hour, they're, they're very, very um, anxious and they're calling repetitively and sending emails. And this is an environment I've never seen, Chris. And it's hard for me to explain to you what it's really like. But I will tell you that there is no motivation like fear and concern. And that is what we are seeing in the mainstream media, even though they are two years too late on this story, they're finally getting it and people are putting the pieces together. It's not just what's happening here. It's the fact that what happens if we lose the reserve standard? And that's what, what Fox and CNN are finally coming out and saying that all of these countries are, are striking deals. But when you see a country like France do a massive liquid natural gas deal with China and do it in Yuan, when you see Mexico join BRICS, when you see Brazil start trading only in Yuan with China, these are things that people are finally saying, oh my gosh, what, what's, what does that mean for the, the dollar? And then you bring it back home and say, gosh, it's, it's that crazy outside the country. And then I can't even feel safe in my bank. It's igniting a whole different level of demand that will without question paralyze the supply before it's all said and done. And I'm telling you, it, it, it's this close to happening. When you see the mints go on allocation, as we talked about last week, the Austrian mint, the Canadian mint, the silver eagles have become a, a numismatic collectible coin because they're so damn expensive. The U.S. mint is the model of inefficiency. We're running on three cylinders instead of six, where three of the six major mints are really ineffective as it pertains to silver right now. And, and then you have other three that, you know, are across the Atlantic ocean and the, and their populace is experiencing the same type of anxiety and issues that we are here. So yeah, it's, um, I have a feeling that, that before this is all said and done, all it's going to take is one more event and it's really going to rattle this industry and there will be no product left. And I, I will go on record as saying that again, this market will define itself before it's all said and done with, with an, the inability to source product easily without paying a fortune and, and the days of being picky and, 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 and cost averaging and all of these, these luxuries that we've taken for granted for a long time. And myself, especially as the little boy who cried wolf, um, it's coming to an end. So here I am again, crying wolf, but I guess we'll see if the wolf really is coming and, you don't have to look too far to see that it is. And, you know, without being political, I mean, I, what, what they're doing to, to former President Trump, to me, just it, it, it hurts me in my heart, not even because it's who he is, just that they're doing this on a world stage for a former president. And, and they, it's almost as if they want to make a jury um, represent the American public as, you know, for the for, for, for the the candidate that that is leading the pack on the Republican Party. And and it to me, it just it just is emblematic of all the dysfunction in this country. And I think people are finally sensing that. And um, and they're they're voting with their wallet by buying precious metals and getting out of the dollar. On a broader sense, because what all of these things put together mean in and of themselves, they're not as big of a deal. You put them all together 
And it, it's a frightening picture that, yeah, we're really screwed up here at home with our current administration, but the rest of the world is running from us. And that, to me, you put it together, and it is a very, very dangerous um, stew of um, uncertainty and, um, and potential massive change on a global scale. Yeah, and in the midst of all of that, uh, what's going on with the premiums this week? Have we seen any movement? I know you saw they were slightly ticking up when we talked last week. Has that started to change again yet? Yeah, they, they are going higher. And one thing that I've noticed is that all of the online companies have jacked up their premiums on gold, too. And it's interesting because for the past three years, you and I would always talk and, and I would tell you that 90% of everything we're doing is in silver. And it still represents the lion's share of what we're doing. But what I found in that environment is that the gold coins that all of the dealers had made commitments to hold or buy were basically being given away at next to nothing. And it's because of a term called cost of carry. Cost of carry meaning that you buy something and even though you, you intend on selling it, it sits on your shelf for a long time. Kind of like when you go into a restaurant and have a cup of coffee with two friends and the place is crazy busy and the, the, you know, the waitress or the waiter is giving you a stink eye, like get out of my seat because you're, you're, you're not letting me turn this over. Well, it's the same thing here. When you, when you had all this gold when no one was buying it, they just had to more or less give it away to rotate it and to put the money into silver, which everyone was buying. That's changed all of a sudden. We've seen a much larger amount of gold sales over the past few weeks. I guess that would be the one differentiation here, now that I think about it, over the last two or three years is that there has been a push to buy gold now too on a larger scale because maybe it's because the orders are much larger. And you know, you can put a hundred grand of gold in a woman's purse and go for a five mile walk and she wouldn't even have a sore shoulder. It's gonna weigh a couple, three pounds. But you put a hundred grand in silver. On the other hand, you're talking 250 pounds, and you start to multiply that on big orders. It becomes logistically challenging, and maybe that's why we're seeing an uptick on gold. Maybe that's why you're seeing the U.S. Mint sell more gold than they have in in you know quite some time. Um, but what you are seeing is premiums go way up in gold, and they are now also rising in silver, uh, and you'll see that continue because the strain that is being put on the, on the supply side of things is, is um, it's more so than silver squeeze. Uh, uh, but the interesting part about it all is that this massive demand hit the best supply we've seen in three years. And I was talking about that you know, with you a lot on this show over Thanksgiving, over Christmas, over New Year's, and the whole month of January when people were just getting back to living life and, and traveling and doing things without uh, pandemic restrictions, the, the whole industry caught up. Premiums came down, the new allocations for 2023 came out, there was a huge volume of supply at low premiums, and then bang, this happens. And, and we're working through that, that supply, but to reallocate and to repurchase comes with delivery delays and higher premiums. So yes, they are moving up, and I think they will continue to move up substantially really noticing it in gold quite a bit. And uh, for the first time in three years, premiums on gold are way elevated. And I don't think this is just a, a fad. I think this will continue unless there's some magic elixir that makes everything better here real soon. Well, I'm sure the Fed has something uh, to make everything okay again planned and that they'll unleash at the next meeting. Inflation down, banking system solid, and everything will be good to go at least what they say and that's what the administration says uh usually turns out a bit different than that but either case andy appreciate you joining me uh before we wrap up can you just let folks know if they have questions want pricing or buy or sell gold or silver what is the best way to reach you yes please send us an email at arcadia at miles franklin <clears throat> where we will uh, answer your questions promptly send you an updated price list um, we won't be undersold. We will make sure your listeners get the very, very best price in the country. And, and you know, normally we like to offer a, a special, but it's been so crazy that it doesn't make sense to offer a special where one client will buy the whole damn thing up. And so we will try our hardest to, to come back next week with the special. Uh, certainly your listeners deserve that. And you and I have been doing this a very long time. And if I wanted to do this with anyone, it would be you. And 
So bear with me. We'll we'll continue to try and make that happen next week. But, but uh, in the meantime, I hope you and yours stay well and everyone out there. And and uh, please trust me. This is the real deal. This is not this is not hyperbole. This is not me just trying to come up with something to say. This is the real deal. And twelve thousand clients in a month is unlike anything I ever would have ever dreamed of ever. And uh, I think this is just the very beginning. So. Anyways, I appreciate you, Chris. I hope to uh, see you again next week and everyone out there stay well. Well, thank you, Andy, once again for this week's physical silver report and touching on everything that is going on. And not surprising to hear how investors are reacting, at least on the physical gold and silver level. Uh, we will see when you get more participation with that on a mainstream fund level, although perhaps today's move through the $2,000 gold price will be the beginning of that. We will see in due time. Although before we wrap up, just wanted to thank First Majestic Silver who brought us today's video. First Majestic did have their 2022 mineral reserve and mineral resource estimates out a couple of days ago. And a few of the highlights here are that mineral reserves at the company's three producing mines totaled 136.8 million silver equivalent ounces. That is a combination of 61.5 million ounces of silver. 781,000 ounces of gold. Silver there remained relatively flat. Obviously, the gold ounces decreased, coming in at a 41% decrease, which was due to the temporary shutdown that they announced just about a week ago from Jared Canyon in Nevada. Measured and indicated resources, total 351.5 silver equivalent ounces. That's 101.7 million ounces of silver, 2.82 million ounces of gold, representing an 8% and 2% decrease, respectively. And the inferred mineral resources total 280.8 million silver equivalent ounces, consisting of 73.6 million ounces of silver, 2.36 million ounces of gold. And I will have the link to this press release where you can go through the full tables and details of those results in the description field below. But did just want to pass along that First Majestic's Mineral Reserve estimates are out. And with that said, going to wrap up for today. But thanks as always for tuning in and we will see you again tomorrow.